In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation. So we're going to start by checking to see if it's exact. So this differential equation has the form m dx plus n dy equals 0. So whenever it's in this form, you can check to see if it's actually exact. So this piece here will be our big M, and this piece here will be our big N. And so to check to see if it's exact, all you have to do is compute del M, del Y. And the trick to memorize this is that there's an X here, so you use the other variable Y for this derivative. When you're computing del M, del Y, all of the X's are constants. So tangent of X is a constant, so its derivative is 0, S negative sine x is constant, and the derivative of sine is cosine, so we just get negative sine x cosine y. Over here we compute del n, del, and sure enough it's just the other variables. There's a y here, so we use x. This time cosine y is a constant, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, and then the cosine y just hangs out. And let's see, these are the same, which is good, so it's exact. Whenever it's exact, uh, I always like to think about what it means. It means that we can find some function such that this piece here is del f del x, and this piece here is del f del y. And so that function is going to be the answer to the problem. It'll be the solution to the differential equation. So to find it, we just integrate the first piece with respect to x and the second piece with respect to y, and then we set them equal to each other. When you integrate tangent, you get negative ln, absolute value of cosine x. And when you integrate here, we're integrating negative sine x sine y with respect to x. So the sine y is a constant. So what's a function whose derivative is negative sine? So cosine. So when you integrate negative sine, you get cosine. So it becomes a positive. And then we're integrating with respect to x. So we add an unknown function of the other variables. So I'm going to add a g of y. Okay, let me just go over that again. In particular, the integration of tangent. Um, if you don't have that memorized, what you can do is you can work it out. And once you work it out one time, you will see that it's easy to memorize. What you can do is you can write tangent as sine over cosine. And if you were to work this out, you would let u be cosine. Well, what would that mean? That would mean that du is negative sine x dx, then you would multiply by negative 1 because there's no negative 1 in your integral, so you would get negative du sine x dx, and then making your substitution, you would get negative du over u, and that's going to be negative ln, absolute value of u, which is cosine, and then you add your c, and life is good. So if you can at least think about how to do it, you'll have it memorized. So I, you look at this, you say, okay, tangent is sine over cosine. Oh, okay, so u is cosine. Oh, all right, so u is on the bottom. That's going to give you a natural log. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that's how you get the negative. So you don't have to go through the entire thought process in your head, but if you kind of have it down, you'll be able to memorize it forever. Here, we're integrating with respect to um, y. So when we integrate cosine with respect to y, we just get sine. So it'll be cosine x sine y. Right, the cosine x is a constant because we're integrating with respect to y. And when you integrate cosine of y, you get sine of y. That's because the derivative of sine is cosine. Plus, and again, we integrate it with respect to y here. So we add an unknown function of x. I'll just call it h of x. All right, that's it. Now we can write the answer down. So both of these are equal to f. So this whole thing here is f, and this whole thing here is f. So basically, we just have to pick the unique components from each equation and then write them down. 
So negative ln, absolute value cosine x, that's the first thing we see, left or right, plus cosine x, sine y, ignore the g of y, and then this here, oh, we already wrote it down. And then at the very end, it's really important in these problems to actually set your answer equal to c. And that's it.